Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, so uh, folks, we're going to uh, get going today on a topic that is going to round out our discussion of um, uh, of coverage, of path coverage testing, a uh, topic we've been talking about the past several lectures. Um, the topic for today is, is fairly uh, contained. It, it focuses on a, a high degree of testing on something called prime path testing. Um, this sort of testing goes well beyond the two other types we've talked about, namely state-based testing and transition testing, to uh, test a broader set of, um, uh, of, of paths within the program. In short, um, it follows this idea of sort of judiciously testing paths in the program, picking paths that are most likely to, uh, to yield uh, fruit in terms of finding defects and uh, takes it to another level of, uh, of sophistication, another level of thoroughness of, of testing, okay? Now, <clears throat> coverage testing, as I noted early on, um, to just remind you of the context here, um, it can be deployed at many different levels and in, in different ways. So the ways we've been talking about and then we focused on are in terms of path coverage. And this included state transition and prime path today. Um, it turns out that uh, we might get a chance before the end of the day just to see a little bit about this idea of, of checking constraints or conditions within the path. So if you have um, uh, your code, for example, or the flow of the program, depending on um, different conditions where if this is true, you do this, if this if it's false, you do that. Um, for example, it behooves you to, to check both sides of that. Um, and in general, if you have several different combinations of conditions, um, you often don't have the choice to test all possible combinations. So it's, again, choosing how to test judiciously, just like with equivalence classes, boundary values, orthogonal arrays, state and transition coverage, we're trying to take our limited testing effort and use it to the best effect. We're trying to get the biggest bang for the buck, recognizing that we only have so many bucks and we want to get um, uh, get as much out of our testing as possible. So uh, you'll recall that I introduced this, this topic of path testing early on in terms of just noting that many systems many processes can be diagrammed, can be abstracted into graphs. Vertices and edges connecting those vertices. This is true at a high level, the various sort of paths that you can take uh, through a system. Um, I, it's true for, for broad processes uh, such as uh, ticketing, and, and this is reflected, say, in the IT system that, that would support that. Um, uh, for processes such as repairing uh, devices, consumer electronic devices. But the same basic principles of being able to construct a graph, a model, a graph model of some underlying much more complex reality holds true at, at the lower level with, uh, with statements, et cetera. And we talked about how you could take a whole, you know, a whole flow of code and divide it up into flow graph, which you could then reason about coverage at various levels for that. Now, I want to remind you the key steps that I emphasize in the coverage procedure. I remind you because the final exam, chances are you may have to remind me of what those are, okay? Um, and I've talked about a lot of things here. And I, having marked, what, thousands of exams maybe in my time, um, I, I don't abuse myself with the, uh, the mistaken impression that you're going to remember everything that I've said. But at least for coverage procedures, you should know about a couple types. Know that some types are stronger than others and have some concrete 
understanding of which types are stronger than which. And you should have a sense of what are the major steps you go through in coverage testing. And I want to repeat those because this will be true for prime paths. But more than that, for understanding prime path testing, it'll be, it, you'll get confused if you don't keep these in mind. Chances are. It's a good chance you'll get confused. Okay. Um, so it's worth, it's worth rehearsing these so you can understand the algorithm that I'm going to be presenting to you for prime path coverage. So what we're trying to do here is for each of these types of coverage, that would include in there um, predicate coverage as well as sort of path coverage, for each type, we're, we're trying to cover something. And the name tells us what we're trying to cover. For state-based coverage, we're trying to cover states, we're trying to reach states. For transition coverage, we're trying to reach transitions. We're trying to include all transitions in our testing to ensure that our testing has, has successfully exercised, that successfully gone across all the transitions, right? For prime path coverage, we're trying to make sense that our transition, that our, that our use of the program, that our exercising of the program will have reached, have executed all prime paths that we've identified through this algorithm I'm going to show, okay? Now, it may be that a given path through it, a given run of the program will exercise many prime paths, all the better, that's great, that's great. But the point is we wanna, we're trying to judge the completeness of our testing by how many prime paths we've reached. And we put in place test cases that will systematically, collectively exercise all the prime paths, or for these early ones, all the states, or the transitions, right? Okay, so, so we're trying to, we, we identify what we're trying to cover first. States, transitions, prime paths, you know, um, combinations of logic conditions, what have you. And we develop a set of scenarios that include all of them. These are paths, in, in, in our case for today, and for state and transition, these are paths from start to finish. They're kind of ways we could go through the program that collectively are going to cover all the things that we want to cover. Cover the states, cover the transitions, cover the prime paths. So these are paths, but they will cover all the prime paths. So in a given scenario, we may go through, you know, we'll come down, we'll go this way on this if statement, we'll go on the false, the alternate for that other if statement, the consequent for another, we'll go around the loop twice, and we'll return from the function. Mm -hmm. And we want to be sure that we want to be clear about which of the things we want to cover, like which statements or which transitions has that path reached, okay? But that's not a test case. What's missing from that being a test case? Why isn't that a test case? Yeah, the scenarios. So I say, I want to go this way and then that way and then around the loop twice and, and leap. Why, why isn't that a test case? It helps you think about test cases. I encourage you to come up with these scenarios. They're awesome. They're much better than not having any thought. But why isn't it a test case yet? It's concrete input. Yeah, it needs concrete input to exercise that path. There's, there's some particular input from the user or from a database or from a file or whatever that's going to cause it to go that way. It's going to cause it to go through the loop twice. It's going to cause it to go this way on this if statement that way on that other that other statement. So for that, we have to develop concrete test cases. So we have to figure out how to make it go that way, right? Just, you may, you may remember this from, from the concrete case we talked about earlier with this, right? So we have this path through code. This happens to be through code, the same principles occur at the high level of a program. There's some particular use case that's going to get it to go through here. Here, here we want we want to exercise, suppose we want to hit all these different transitions. So, so we might figure, okay, there's you know one path through here that goes this way and it's done. 
another path that goes this way and this way and then makes uh, a right turn at all of these and goes down and then it comes up again and then it finishes. Another path, this is an abstract path. This is what I'm talking about when I'm saying abstract scenarios. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, okay, this other one, it comes down here and then it goes here and then down like this and then it goes out, right? Those are abstract scenarios. But how to get it to do those, that requires input like this, right? I have to give it input. I have to say like, okay, well, what particular string that I give it will cause it to go that way? That's a test case. That is a test case. The abstract scenarios are not yet a test case. They're the whisper of test cases, but they're not yet a test case. They might suggest test cases. They beckon to have test cases to find, but they're not a test case. And you, ladies and gentlemen, need to present for me, but nay, for self-respectability, to exercise your program well, you have to come up with a sense of what you want to cover, a sense of abstract scenarios that will be covering those things. Say in a test matrix, you're reasoning, okay, we need to cover this feature. We want to cover that feature. We need to get to that screen, right? You have that flow diagram like we saw earlier for your system. You know, something something along this line for your sort of system, a block diagram. This is this is a screen in your app, and these are different screens, and they can get to each other by different things, or these are modes in your in your system for interactive exploration, whatever it is. And you're gonna to want to understand that and you're gonna have scenarios through those things, and then you've got to come up with some particular thing we're gonna do, like with some input, we've got to give it some file of data, some some database content, some, we'll, we'll have the user frob this controller in this certain way and it will get it to go that way, right? Um, so you gotta come up with those test cases for me. And then I will look upon those test cases and I will smile upon them. I promise you, I'll smile upon your test cases, okay? Just give them to me. Otherwise, you may cry upon their absence. Okay, well, I may not cry, but um, I'll be sad because it will have missed its potential. Okay. Um, okay. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, your job is to come up ultimately with test cases. But these earlier steps, these earlier steps are to guide us towards those test cases. They help us think systematically about what test cases to put together that was the biggest bang for the buck. So we don't just willy-nilly pick test cases. What the hell? You know, um, give it a string of all Zs or something like that. Um, it, they force you to think systematically about, okay, what test cases um, do we still need to cover at least basic, basic respectability so that you could face your manager and say, yeah, this is a well-tested program. We've, we've really thoroughly exercised it. What things do you need? Um, okay, so so that was the, the context. And coming from that context, we, we noted that here, as in some other areas of computer science, most notably abstract machines and language hierarchies, we have a hierarchy, a subsumption hierarchy. And we could create a partial order here upon different levels of testing. So who can remember from my description last time, wouldn't this look pretty in, a, in an exam? And I, I could ask you like, what does the arrow from edge coverage to node coverage mean here? Well, maybe I won't wait for the exam. What does the arrow from edge coverage to node coverage mean here? Subsumes. Okay, what does it mean by good? What does it mean by subsumes? Encapsulates. Okay. <laughs> okay, what does it mean by encapsulate? By definition, it does more than the coverage. Yeah, so it covers everything node coverage does, 
but it covers more than it here. It actually, it, it, it guarantees you node coverage, but more than that as well. So you could say encapsulate, but the word encapsulation in computer science means many things. It also means like hiding details. And it's associated with interface-based programming. And, and that's a topic on which I could, go, I could wax eloquent, but uh, alas, like uh, Pascal, I have not the time. Um, like Fermat, couldn't fit it into the, to the margin. So edge coverage here is stronger, we could say, than node coverage. It, if you achieve edge coverage, You've achieved node coverage plus more. And this, this hierarchy has been explored by many testing tools and by many, many areas of testing research. And you'll notice there's different kind of branches on it, OK? Um, today, or the past two lectures, we've talked about past lecture, we talked about node coverage and edge coverage. And those are good basic and well supported in tools. Today's tools will support um, those levels of coverage. And that's awesome. And I will be happy to hear that you've deliberately sought to achieve, say, edge coverage. That you have picked a set of test cases that achieve like, you know, 85%, 90% edge coverage. That would be awesome. Boy, would I smile. Boy, would I smile. And I'd be very, very pleased. But today, our quarry lies higher in this diagram. It's prime path coverage. Okay. This is stronger than edge coverage. It's stronger than edge pair coverage. It actually guarantees not just you'll cover all edges, but you'll cover pairs of edges, too. Okay. Um, And it provides a degree of rigor in the coverage that therefore goes well beyond edge and node. So, so I'd like to, to advance us uh, to that stage. You may remember that state coverage was particular basic. All we need to do is hit each state, right? But we weren't guaranteed to make each transition. And this way, it's kind of hard to say your program's well tested. After all, You've never, you have this airline ticketing thing. You've never simulated one where the user is paid and they've got refunded. How can you be at all confident that's going to do well? I wouldn't want to fly in a plane that's been tested that well. An airline, right? Um, it might be interesting, but fatally interesting. Um, so transition coverage does more than that, but it too falls prey to certain issues. It, it hasn't covered combinations of conditions here. It hasn't covered, you know, cases where we went foo is true and, and bar is true, where foo, whoa, foo is not true and bar is not true. Okay, am I at the beginning or back? Okay, there we go. Um, no, no problem. So so there's a gap for state coverage that's covered by test coverage, but uh, but in, in, in uh, transition coverage, rather, but in transition coverage, we're not co uh, capturing combinations of ways we could get to from from a predecessor and get to the end and maybe you know f causes problems not every time you go there but only if you come to f through c and maybe we've tested b to d and d to f but we've never tested c to d and and d to f, d to f and bad things happen so so we are going to explore today this uh, prime path coverage okay and prime path coverage understand it, it requires a little bit more prep than for transitions. So I'm going to give two definitions here. One is for what's called a simple path, and another thing that's called a prime path. Okay. Um, a simple path um, is going to be instructive for understanding what a prime path is. Okay. Um, but it's the same. So consider we have a graph. Well, um, uh, okay, so I think I've been favoring that side of the room. There's a, and I, I take it it's just due to my 
my internal habits. Um, there's a, a story I heard of uh, an MIT professor of behavioral science. This is back in the days of behaviorism, where there was all this idea of reinforcement learning. So you, you reinforce some stimulus, like for a rat by, say, feeding it, feeding it food when it does something, and it gets more and more attuned to, to doing that thing. So you feed it food when it presses a bar with its nose. And so it'll start to press the bar more and more. You know, and, and they didn't like, they thought it was somehow unscientific to talk about whether the, 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 the rat had a conception of the bar. The issue was it, it just pressed the bar more, more frequently. So anyway, he was teaching this class um, uh, to young people, much like yourselves, but of an earlier generation. Um, and, uh, and the students were interested in the theory, but wanted to put it into practice. So they decided that they would perform a behavioral experiment on the professor. <laughs> so, so they colluded. And they colluded so that every time the professor walked to one side of the room, they would look bored, sort of put their heads down. Okay, they didn't have phones in those days, but they would twiddle their thumbs or something. Well, they, they, they would, you know, doze off and, 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 and sort of look at each other and, and not pay attention at all. And then the other side, they would, they would be wrapped. They would stare at the, at the professor's, um, professor's writing, copy things down really diligently, and act attentive, attuned, and interested. So they did this. And apparently after some number of lectures, I think it was maybe five lectures or something, supposedly that professor was boxed into one corner. Like <laughs> he would not leave that corner because that's where the students looked really attentive. And if he walked out, of course, they'd start to you know, doze off. And they like pegged him. Um, and they, they, they practiced what he taught them um, in terms of theory, uh, perhaps better than he had planned. Okay, so I don't think that's going on. But I've, 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 not, been, I've not favored this side of the room, but I apologize. I should really spend more time over here. You got a lot of good answers to questions over there, over here. And um, so, so, so I'll, I'll spend more time over here. I'll try to do it the next one to lectures, OK? OK, thanks. Um, OK, so ladies and gentlemen, if we have a graph, um, uh, maybe this is a flow graph within an algorithm. Maybe it's a graph showing connectivity between screens of the algorithm, between modes, between web pages, whatever, right? Um, we might have uh, uh, you know, connectivity of various sorts, and there might, might be, uh, within a graph like this, loops, right? We could have loops in a, in a program, right? We could have some screens which reach back to the many screens which reach back to a home screen and a web page, right, and a, and a web, web app, et cetera. Okay, um, so uh, if we have a graph like this, um, we talk about a path, you know, from, from node A to B as, as being a connected series of edges that move from, from A to B, right? And I think you would have seen this in 260 before, right? Paths, paths through a network, yeah? You have directed edges in the network that define, you can go from this vertex to that vertex, this node to that node, and the edges define possible <coughs> movements between them, and a path is defined as a contiguous sequence of these edges of length zero or more. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want to specifically define something you are unlikely to see in 260, and that's the notion of a simple path, okay? That, that's not merely a colloquial term here, a simple path compared to like a complex path. Um, it's, it's actually a technical term here. And what we mean by a simple path is a path from a node A to B, just like any old path, but where there's no repetition of nodes within that path, except possibly with the possible exception that A equals B itself, that the start and finish are the same. Mm -hmm. So, so let's suppose I were to, to label these nodes here. I'll, I'll put them on the board. I, I feel bad for our internet 
listeners because I, I won't be able to share this diagram. Maybe I'll take a picture of it before the end and put it in the video. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D, and E. Um, can anyone give me a, uh, a few simple paths here, okay? So again, a simple path is a path that includes um, no repetition except possibly the first and the last node are the same, okay? So can anyone give me a simple path first? Of, of length of four? You said there's the option the first and last nodes are the same. Does that mean they can be the same node or they have the same value? Uh, they can be they can be the same node. So you can just do a loop then? That's that's right. You could have a, a simple loop. Yeah. So so suppose we have uh, something something along those those lines. I'll I'll make it a little bit more interesting. Okay. So um can anyone give me a simple path of length four? Yeah. A D C D. A, okay, A, D, C, B, and then A. So this is the blank five uh, in terms of nodes. You, it would be four in terms of, of edges, I should have specified. Let's say I'm talking about in terms of nodes. So uh, look, that's great. It's better than I just been. Yeah, so is this a simple path? Yeah. It's one where the first and the last nodes are the same. It starts and finishes with A, but that's okay. It can still be a simple path. Give me another simple path. Give me one that's not a simple path. Anyone do that? I'll, I'll leave the length um, as large or small as you'd like. What's, what's not a simple path? B, E, C, D, A? Uh, B, E, C, okay, C, C, B, A? Yeah. B, E, C, B, A, okay, um, C, B, A. Well, yeah, it turns out that, so that's true, that's not a simple path. It turns out it's not actually a path in this because from B you can go to E but you can't go directly back to C here because there's no there's no link back from E to C only to D um, but uh, but can, can anyone continue this idea give me one that's not yeah uh -huh. okay sorry uh, so say this again B E D, yeah. B A. Uh, B E D, B A. Okay, again. Uh, B E oh D, yes. Sorry, sorry. B E D. So bum bum bum. B A. Yeah. So why does that violate being a simple path? Why is that not a simple path? B is well. Okay. B is in there twice without it being the. First and last, yeah. So if I knock the A off the end, would that be a simple path? Yeah, it would be. It would be without the A. With the A in here, is that a simple path? No. No. So that's not simple. And this is simple. Give me another one that's not simple. E, D, B, E, D, B, E. I love it. B E, so we're going around this thing several times. B E D, B E D, B E D. Yeah, uh, it, it violates it. However many times you want to do it, more. Um, it, that's that's not a simple path. Okay. Give me, give me uh, another simple path. So this is not simple. Maybe I should just put. Logical notation not over it. Yeah. So give me another simple one. Give me a give me a really small simple one. AC. AC. Good. How about even smaller? A. a. Good. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So 
Let me ask you another question. Do you think there could be a simple path on this of length 100? No. Why not? There's only five notes. Yeah. There's only, there's only five notes here. So by the pigeonhole principle, there's got to be a repetition of a node more than, in fact, of a node, in fact, more than once. And so you're not going to be able to have that. So, so this graph has, has a little bit of length of, 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 the, uh, of the length of simple paths. And more than that, all graphs are going to have a limited length of the number of nodes of simple paths, right? It's going to be the number of nodes speak, speak on. Is it going to, the, the, the maximum length you could get if you have n nodes, the maximum length of a path that could be simple is what? n plus 1. n plus 1. n plus 1. So, so these are simple paths, ladies and gentlemen. Simple, simple path. The notion of a simple path that is important. It's so simple that it's, it's a straightforward definition. And it's something that is small enough it could be tested. Hmm? Examined. Examined. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so that's simple paths. We're not just discovering all simple paths. Though. We're discovering prime paths. Now, prime paths, all prime paths are simple paths. But not every simple path is a prime path. Specifically, a prime path, the, the notion of prime here is kind of similar to prime number, okay? Um, uh, in, in a certain distant way. Here, we, ask, we say something's prime if it's not contained as a subpath of any other simple path, okay? It's... It's kind of a, a maximum length simple simple path. Um, it's 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 not contained as a uh, as a subpath of any other path. There's no path that that is simple and includes it. Right? Does that make sense? There's there's not a simple path that's so large it just subsumes it. It's it's one that's that's kind of um, just like a prime number can't be divided into all these different constituents. Here, this is not merely included in in other simple paths for this diagram. Okay, so so it's a subset of the simple paths for the diagram. Does that make sense? It's a subset by virtue of the fact that it includes only those that are not contained in something else. If something else contains it it's considered as, as not a prime path because it's sort of covered by that, that other simple path. Okay, so we're trying to find here prime paths. These paths that are simple paths, so they can't have too much repetition in them. These are the things we wanna cover, but they're, they're big enough to not be contained in something else. Does that make sense? Here I am back in this corner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You folks smiling too much or something? Um, okay. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll promise I'll be back um, over there. Okay. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we're trying to find prime paths. We're, we're trying to cover prime paths here, and we're going to find some other paths that cover prime paths, just like we were finding paths through the program that covered each state or that covered each transition. Here, we're going to find paths through the program that will cover all the prime paths, okay? Um, it's not that each of the paths through the program will be a prime path, it's just it has to cover all the prime paths. Hmm? Maybe I should try to bring my computer over there or something. Okay, now that, then we're talking. Um, okay, so um, here's some examples of prime paths. So these are ones are drawn with, uh, with greater clarity than my own. Um, so uh, here we have uh, two elements, and the prime paths here are going to be, what do you think? Oh, man. So what, what are the prime paths here? 
<laughs> what, are, what are the prime paths to the one to my right here? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, so what are what are the prime paths there? Okay. So yeah, and not and one and three. And what's another one? And zero and two and three. Yeah. Good. So those are the prime paths, and we're going to come up with a set of abstract paths through this that cover those. And those abstract paths, in this case, could be the prime paths themselves. So those will cover those, right? If we had abstract paths that were those prime paths themselves, those will cover them. But as we'll see this one to the left, this one to the right here, depending on which way you're facing, um, uh, it, it might have a set of prime paths, but we're going to have test paths that that are, are different than that. Okay, so what are some prime paths for this one to the right here? And one, for sure. Yeah, and one, oh, uh, and one, this is N3, but yeah, yeah, N3, I know it's hard to read. And one, and three, and four. Um, is, that a, is that a prime path? Is that a simple path? <laughs> yeah, it's a simple path, for sure. It's a simple path, right? It has no, it, it's a path. And it has no repetition at all. It's a simple path. Is it a prime path? Yeah. What path could contain it and still be simple? So, so if I heard uh, Peggy correct, it was N one and three and four. What path could still be a prime? Could still be a simple path and contain that one? And zero and one, sorry, and zero and and one and three and four and three and four. Yeah, it, it that that would work. That would work. What's another one that would contain it? By the way, could we enlarge that one to include n one at the end? No, no, because no, it wouldn't be a what? Simple. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay, so give me another path that's simple but still that's that that still contains n one and three and four. And one, three and four and one. And and one and three and four and one. That that's a simple path. After all, it has it has repetition, but it's the first and the last that are the same. But it does contain n one and three and four by itself. So and one and three and four, what does this all suggest? By the two examples, that's a simple path. Is it a prime path? No, because it's it's contained in both those other prime paths. It, it's contained in both those other prime paths. By the way, that last one, and one and three and four and one, could that be extended? No. No, why not? Because it's first equal to n. Yeah. Yeah, if, if it got extended. It would violate the rule that if there's any repetition, it has to be the first and the last of the same, right? So it wouldn't be legit to extend it. Then it then it would, you know, it basically a simple path can't have a loop inside of itself. Like, you know, it can't be chugging along and then it has a loop and then it continues on. It it can only be a, a nice loop back on itself. It can't it can't have kind of a loop and then, you know, a little tail or a, a, a loop and a sort of thing that starts like that. that. That that won't work. It can only be one of these sort of a complete cycle, right? Okay. Um, that's simple path. And then a prime path, the question is, does it contain it? Prime path is a little bit slippery. Now, this one on the right. So the prime paths are the things we want to cover, just like we want to cover states. There I go again. It's just like we want to cover states, so we want to cover transitions. We came up with a set of concrete test cases that are of, of scenarios that cover them, and then we found test cases that would make those, would realize those scenarios, would cause them to, to be, to come about, right? So the prime paths here we can list out and the actual test paths that we take might be much fewer in number, because each test path, I, I would say that those two test paths, 
I know, I, I should really bring binoculars to this lecture. You could like, come in. I'll give you a hint. These slides are actually on the Moodle site, so you can actually go there. You should be able to find them if you want to use a magnifying glass. Um, but I would argue that these two paths here, pass through the program, achieve prime path coverage. Why do I say that? Just two, and there's so many prime paths, right? We have five of them now. Oh, six of them. Oh my gosh, six of them, six prime paths. But these, all I, I'm saying, all I need is those two paths. Why? The path uh, T4. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. It can, it's the, all the prime paths are a subset of. That's right. That's right. Now, now you may be wondering. Well, wait a minute. Prime path can't be a sub. You know, hold your horse. Um, it can't be a uh, subset of a simple path. It can't be a subset of another simple path. But it's fine. These are, these are, our test paths through the program, just like. We need a test pass to cover all states of the program, or we needed when we wanted transition coverage. We need a test pass that collectively would would cover all the transitions. Um, here we want test pass that will cover all the prime paths, but that doesn't mean the test pass have to be prime paths themselves. They can be much bigger than prime paths. But the point is, just as earlier we want to cover states, we want to cover transitions. Here we want to cover prime paths, and and these paths through the program have to cover them. So it's kind of like your test matrices that you're giving to me, and which I will smile upon. Those test matrices highlight, you know, for each for each function, for example, which test cases cover it. Here, for each prime pass, we need at least one test case that will cover it, at least one one test path and test cases behind that. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so don't don't get mixed up into thinking like somehow for prime path testing, the paths through the program have to be prime. That'd be a good question on an exam. True or false? And yeah, false. <laughs> um, that's exactly right. It's false. Um, so so uh, if if there were a question. In prime path coverage, um, the test the test paths through the program have to be have to be prime, or you know um, cannot be cannot be contained, um, or cannot contain any other prime paths or what have you. That that's false. That's false, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so so these are the prime paths. These are the test cases, and these are the sets of test paths that cover the prime paths. Mm -hmm. That cover these things we want to cover. You could have substituted in here earlier. These are states. We want to cover the states, and these paths cover the states. We we want to cover transitions. These paths cover transitions. Here we're covering prime paths. Okay, okay, great. Um, okay, now how do I get these prime paths? So this sounds great, but how do I how do I identify the prime paths? After all, um, if we think about states. Or we think about transitions, it's really obvious from the diagram where they are. I mean, you know, you, you start with a diagram like this, and you can just read, whoa, you can just read out the transitions. You can just read them out, identify them, N0, N1, uh, N3, N1, N1, N2. Um, if they were states, you just read them out. How are we going to identify the prime paths? Well, this is a little bit trickier because they're, they're, you know, it's it's not really immediately obvious where they are in the diagram. So, like most computer scientists, when we have a problem, we create a solution in the form of an algorithm. Okay, and the algorithm is shown here. Now, this algorithm is something. that you could be tested on as well. Um, and it has a few tricky parts about it. There's, there's like with so many algorithms, there's a kind of logic, a, a clear logic behind it once you penetrate it. Um, but the notation and, and sort of the, the reasoning, the operations in it, it's not always obvious how they relate. So I'm gonna walk you through this algorithm, okay? And fortunately, this is being recorded. 
on YouTube. Let's make, make sure that it's uh, still uh, being happily recorded out there. Um, looks, uh, looks like it's a happy camper. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, in this algorithm, we're going to come up with a set of prime path candidates called PP, okay? Now, PP is, is gonna contain prime path candidates, but it turns out that not all of them are prime paths, and, and we just have to go through a process of discarding proper subpaths uh, from there, okay? Um, so this may contain some simple paths that, that need to be discarded because they're, they're subsets of others. And it turns out that's a pretty simple operation to do. It's pretty quick to be able to find if one path is a sub, sub path of another. If any of you are familiar with it, do you cover in three, three, 360, you cover dynamic programming? Yeah? Substring problem? If one string is a substring of another? Sort of. <laughs> uh, did, did you cover an algorithm for substring? Uh, are some of you taking 360 now? Last term. Last long time ago. <laughs> uh, uh, dynamic programming? Does, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. It, the classic algorithm to do it on is 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 string substring algorithm. And it, it's awesome, but I don't have time to go into it in this lecture or or less in this course. Um but it's a beautiful algorithm and it can be done very efficiently. And you can use that algorithm basically here for, for, for this problem. Okay, so so we're gonna get the, the, the end result of this top algorithm is 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 this set PP, which is a set of candidate prime paths. Okay. And we're gonna build it up iteratively as long as we can go and keep adding things to it. And the, a key understanding is that as we add things to it, we are considering candidates of larger and larger size. In other words, the paths are longer and longer, okay? Now, I would argue that the algorithm always converges. It always ends up in a situation where you can't go any further in terms of paths um, uh, that that are larger. Why is that? Why is that? If we're adding each time to the length of the path, I would argue there's a logical limit to how far we need to go. Why is that? You touched on it earlier. Because it can't repeat. Yeah. A prime path can be no longer than the number of nodes plus one. Plus one. Thank you. Yeah. Good to avoid off plus one errors. Okay. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, this, this variable i is going to compute the current length of the paths we're considering. Okay. So, i, I is going to rise. So, it's going to be one initially. We're considering paths of length one, and just nodes themselves. And then we're going to be considering paths of length two, and then three, and then four. And P sub i here is going to be a set of these that, that we're going to be working with um, in order to, to identify possible prime paths within them, okay? So we're going to be considering this sort of seed set of, of, uh, of length two or three, et cetera. So we're going to start with a, a set of candidates uh, for prime paths called PP, which is empty. It's an empty set. There's nothing in it. Now, we're then going to start the, this loop with P1 initially being all the paths of length one. That's just the nodes. That's P sub one. Okay? And again, P sub two is going to be a length two, P sub three, length three, et cetera. Okay, so as we're executing the body of this loop, basically, um, as long as we have some of these candidates to add to, we're going to be accumulating these 
candidate things for that are next larger size, that are one larger. So suppose we're going to get one, we're going to have P sub i plus one be things of length two, okay? Now, we're going to take some intermediate variables that we're going to be using in this whole process. So we're going to consider R, a set of paths in P sub i that are cycles or cannot be extended. These are things we're going to reject, hence R. We're going to get rid of them, hence R. Right? We're gonna we're gonna um, be be discarded. Okay. So um, R is the set of paths of, in P sub i that are cycles or cannot be extended forward because they end at, at some terminal node. Okay. So if there's some terminal node of, of this um, at which you you need to end, it can't go any further from that node. If there were like an F here, um, we wouldn't be able to extend it. So we're going to be looking and seeing, okay, is there anything in this P sub I that, that that's obviously cannot be extended because it's already a cycle? Why can't we extend it if it's already a cycle? Why cannot we extend it if it's already a cycle? Yeah. Because then the first and the last note won't, won't be the same anymore. And but we'll still have a repetition. And therefore it will not be a simple path. Okay. And if it's at a terminal node, there's nowhere for it to go. If it's at F here, there's nowhere for it to go. So we can't extend it there. So basically we're going to get rid of things we can't extend. That's what R is. These are like things we cannot extend. Okay? From from piece of body, from this sort of set of seeds. Okay, which are the things we can't do anything about? We can't extend. Get rid of them. Boom. Um, so uh, those are things we're going to get rid of. This is the thing that's a little bit confusing. We're going to get rid of them from P sub i. We can't extend them to get our P sub i plus one. We can't extend them to get some paths one more. But guess where they go? They go into the set of candidates for prime paths. They're candidates for being prime paths. Why? Why would those be candidates for being prime paths? If they're a cycle, is that a good candidate for being a prime path? Say that again? Louder this time? Yes. Yes. Darn right it's a good it's a good candidate for being a, a prime path. Why? why? Why would a cycle be a good candidate for being a prime path? Is there a simple path that could contain it? Or something that's bigger that could contain it? That could contain a cycle? If it's going from A to A, is there a, is there a simple path that's bigger than this? No. No. No, because it can't be. Then it wouldn't be a simple path, right? Because the simple path, the only way you can have a cycle in a simple path is if it's a start and finish of the same. You can't have something with a little tail at the end or a tail at the beginning. Cannot do that, right? Hmm. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, cycles are good candidates for being prime paths. How about things that can't be extended at all? Why, why would that be? Things that are like, because they end at the terminal node, why would that be a good candidate for being a, a prime path? Well, if it could be extended, yeah, yeah. Since it can't be extended, it logically cannot be contained on a path, because yeah. if it was able to be contained on a path, it could be extended to that. Uh... That's right. So if you could extend it, if, if you could have a node where something is extended from there, then, then the path till now could be a subset of that path with the extension, right? And here, if, if we can't extend it forward, well, it's not guaranteed to be a prime path, but at least it, it's a good candidate for being considered to be a prime path, right? Um, okay, so these are things, these are, these are things that can't be extended and hence, we're going to get rid of them from paths to extend to get the next larger set of paths. 
to get to extend to get go from one to two. We're going to get rid of those ones that can't be extended. Um, can't do anything about them. They like, can't be extended and still be a legitimate simple path. Can't be a path at all to be extended, right? Um, in some cases, like if it's the terminal, there's no path that extends it. But not only we're going to do that, we're going to add them to PP, the set of candidates for prime paths. We can't guarantee they're prime paths, but they're good candidates. Hmm? <clears throat> they gave their cycles. Ah. Yeah, so we're adding them to PP, and we're getting rid of them from this EP. EP is just the set of all paths we're dealing with of our current length, say length one, and we get rid of these ones we can't extend. Why? Because at EP, we're going to be extending. Hence the E. We're going to extend EP. Mm. Mm. We're going to extend these guys. Okay, for each path that's in EP, each path that can be extended, each of those paths, for each node N in the set of all nodes, such that they can be reached from the last position in this path. So we have a path to a certain point. And now we're going to consider all the nodes N that can be reached from there. Maybe it goes to several different places. Maybe the last thing in our path right now is B, and we can get to E from B. Or maybe the last thing in our path right now, maybe we went from to A to D, and now D is the last our path, and the set of all nodes N would be what here? Set of all nodes that can be reached from D would be Speak on in a stentorian voice. B and E. Yeah, B and E. Good, good. B and E, ladies and gentlemen. So each node n and the set of all nodes that 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 can be reached from this last one, right? Um, I'm glad I'm over on this side. Look at that. This is awesome. Awesome. Good job. Um uh okay, and then if n is the first, or if n is not included uh, in P, okay, if it's, if it's the first or it's not already in the path, then we'll append it to be this, this seed set for the next round, which is the round one larger, okay? So why these conditions? Why we say if N is, is the first, if, if this node that we can reach from here is the same as the start of the path, or if it's not included in there, why do we have those conditions and only then append it? Suppose those conditions were false, okay? Suppose we have a situation where N is included in P, for example. When, why would that be, why would we not want to append it? It's not a simple path anymore. It's not a simple path, exactly. Unless it was what? The first, the first one. That's, that's right. The only condition which would be able to do it if it's the first. So if, if, if this path, we're or this node we're considering reaching from here, if that's already in our path, unless it's the first, we can't add it in to this, right? So we can only add it in if it's the first or if it's not included at all in there. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. Um, Colliding galaxies, good, good thing. Um, okay, so so here, this is how we get a legit set that don't violate the criteria of being simple paths. They don't they don't contain any node except possibly the first equals the last. Um, th that's that's what's guaranteed by this condition. If n equals first or this, um, that guarantees that these things being added. Of the next bigger size, like we're one now, we're going to go to two. Um, uh, those things uh, still are, are simple paths, P sub I are simple paths, and we're going to go to the next round where those are the things that now we're going to consider whether they are good candidates. If so, we'll put them in in PP. If if they're if they're not uh, prime paths, uh, not, clearly not prime paths, we won't con we'll consider them for extension. Okay. And as I said, you, to find the prime pass, uh, discard from PP any pass their proper subsets to the others at the end. Okay, so let's let's go through this with a little example here. Okay, so length length one. Here we have zero, 
uh, we have well, we have all the nodes, right? That's what that's what we set up at the top of this algorithm, up, right up there, right? Start with p sub one being paths of length one, right? So p sub one, this, these are the p's here. P sub one is all the nodes of length one. There we are. See that? Now, I've put a, an exclamation point here next to something that can't be extended because it ends uh, at the terminal node, okay? And I put a star, it cannot be extended because it will contain an illegal cycle, okay? So, so this thing that has an exclamation point, where would that come out? If it can't be extended because it ends in the terminal node, where would that come out of this in this first pass through when we're dealing with p sub one? What would happen to that set that can't be extended because they end at a terminal node? They're part of what? Yeah, R. R. So they are going to be put into the set uh, PP, right? Um, into the set of, of possible prime paths. And they are going to um, uh, be considered, therefore, for, for candidacy for prime path, just based on whether they're included in something else. So then, because they're in R, they're excluded from what? They're excluded from being grown. <laughs> being grown for this this next round the rest can be grown how do we grow them how do we grow them appended to the next step. yeah okay. yeah next exactly there's a, there's a node that gets appended to it anything that can be reached from it as long as it it, it it's okay by this condition as long as the thing being added to it is it's just the first element of it um or if it's not included in there. So these guys get extended. Do you see how they got extended? Zero went to zero one. See that? Why did it go to zero one? Because it could be reached from the final place, from last P here for this path, last P is what? Zero. And N here is one. It can be reached from there, N one, that node, that node N, can be reached from last P, can be reached from node N0. So this is N0. So it can be extended to that. Could it be extended to something else too? N4. So here we have, this is a, another candidate. That was one that got extended. So, so zero was not in R. The only one that was in R was six. So it got, you notice it's not being extended because it can't be extended. So R here, um, did not contain zero, and therefore it was part of EP, and it got extended with each N that it can reach. One, N1, and N4. There it is. Similarly, one, what can it reach? N2, since two is here, right? Um, what can one reach? It can also reach N5. What can two N2 reach? Where is it? Where is it? Here it is. It can only reach what? N3. So we could extend it with that. Okay, so we're going down here. This is our second pass through. Where we're dealing with P sub two, right? Um, these ones here. And and I would, those, those P sub two got calculated down here based on extending P1s that were extensible, the EPs. And so those came out of that. Now, what's going to happen in that second round when we're considering those ones of length two? What's going to happen to four four? What's going to happen to four four here? It's a what? It's a cycle. So it's part of R. So what's going to happen with something that's in R? Well, it's not going to be considered for extension. And it's going to be added to what? PP is a candidate prime path. And in fact, that is a prime path. What happened to six? Why isn't six in here? Why isn't six in the actual list of prime paths? Because it's a member of, it's also contained within another one, okay? As it turns out. So I've highlighted with exclamation points four, six and five, six. Why, wh what happens to those? These cannot be extended because they end at a terminal node. What happens to those? Where do those go? Do they go into EP or do they go into R? If they end at a terminal node, they go into what? Where do they go? 
They go into R, therefore they get removed and they're possible candidates for prime pass. As it turns out, they won't make the final cut because why? Why wasn't four, four six make the final cut? Because it's a, it's a subset of something else that's gonna come. Because these guys go into R, do they get extended? No, the only things that get extended are things not in R. The things either get extended, they're in P sub I minus R, or they're in R and they get added to this, this uh, list of possible candidate prime pass. So these guys don't get extended. What happens to the rest of these? They get speak as in one voice. One audible voice. What, what happens to these guys? They get, they get extended. Yeah. So zero one goes to zero one two. Zero and zero one five, right? Zero one, well, where can it go? Two and five. There it is. In all its beauty. How about zero four? Where does that get extended to? Zero four six. Oh, it can go to six. Okay. Why didn't it get extended to zero four four? Yeah, because it's it's already included in it, and it's not the first. Mm -hmm. So it can't get extended. So so these guys sort of get extended to these ones, and then some of these are in R. These guys here. Why are these guys in R? Because they ended at the terminal node, so they'll be put down here. And and guess what? We're extending these further. And guess what? The further extension of the ones that can be extended here, there's only one legitimate further extension which is this guy here. Why can't zero, one, two be extended? Zero, one, two, why can't, why can't that be extended? Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. Uh, oh, it can't, this is length five. I omitted length four, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll put in length four here. It can be extended, but by the time you're in length five, sorry, this is a script. So by the time you're length five, you only have one. Why is that? Why can't you keep on going on and on? Because you can't make this criteria here. Again, the longest simple path is of length, the number of nodes plus one at most. You cannot go longer than that. So of course, by the end, there's no, there's no more. This, this P sub I equals empty string. There's no more, it can be extended and you fall through, and then you sort out PP, okay? No one has ever in this class done prime path coverage. I'd be awestruck if anyone does prime path coverage of an algorithm in, in it or in transitions among screens. Wouldn't be terribly hard. Wouldn't be horribly hard. It'd be actually pretty straightforward to run this algorithm. Think about it. And with that, I close this lecture. Thank you. Yeah, um, a question about the prime path coverage. Yeah. It seems that right now we're actually, there's a dependency on us figuring out what transitions 